Nasikita. Teach me of that you see as beyond right and wrong, cause and effect, past and future. Yama. I will give you the word all the scriptures glorify, all spiritual disciplines express, to attain which aspirants lead a life of sense restraint and self naughting. It is Om. This symbol of the Godhead is the highest. Realizing it, one finds complete fulfillment of all one's longings. It is of the greatest support to all seekers. Those in whose hearts Om reverberates unceasingly are indeed blessed and deeply loved as one who is the Self. The all-knowing Self was never born, nor will it die. Beyond cause and effect, the Self is eternal and immutable. When the body dies, the Self does not die. If the slayer believes that he can slay, or the slain believes that he can be slain, neither knows the truth. The eternal Self slays not, nor is it ever slain. Hidden in the heart of every creature exists the Self, subtler than the subtlest, greater than the greatest. They go beyond sorrow who extinguish their self-will and behold the glory of the self through the grace of the Lord of Love. Though one sits in meditation in a particular place, the self within can exercise his influence far away. Though still, he moves everything everywhere. When the wise realize the self, formless in the midst of forms, changeless in the midst of change, omnipresent and supreme, they go beyond sorrow. The self cannot be known through study of the scriptures, nor through the intellect, nor through hearing learned discourses. The self can be attained only by those whom the self chooses. Verily, unto them does the self reveal himself. The self cannot be known by anyone who desists not from unrighteous ways, controls not his senses, stills not his mind, and practices not meditation. None else can know the omnipresent self whose glory sweeps away the rituals of the priest and the prowess of the warrior and puts death itself to death. In the secret cave of the heart, too, are seated by life's fountain, the separate ego drinks of the sweet and bitter stuff, liking the sweet, disliking the bitter, while the Supreme Self drinks sweet and bitter, neither liking this nor disliking that. The ego gropes in darkness while the Self lives in light. So declare the illumined sages and the householders who worship the sacred fire in the name of the Lord. May we light the fire of Nachiquita that burns out the ego and enables us to pass from fearful fragmentation to fearless fullness in the changeless whole. Know the self as lord of the chariot, the body as the chariot itself, the discriminating intellect as charioteer, and the mind as reins. The senses, say the wise, are the horses. Selfish desires are the roads they travel. When the self is confused with the body, mind, and senses, they point out, he seems to enjoy pleasure and suffer sorrow. When one lacks discrimination and his mind is undisciplined, the senses run hither and thither like wild horses, but they obey the rein like trained horses when one has discrimination and has made the mind one-pointed. Those who lack discrimination with little control over their thoughts and far from pure reach not the pure state of immortality but wander from death to death. But those who have discrimination with a still mind and a pure heart reach journey's end, never again to fall into the jaws of death. With a discriminating intellect as charioteer and a trained mind as reins, they attain the supreme goal of life to be united with the Lord of Love. The senses derive from objects of sense perception, sense objects from mind, mind from intellect, and intellect from ego. 
ego from undifferentiated consciousness and consciousness from Brahman. Brahman is the first cause and last refuge. Brahman, the hidden self in everyone, does not shine forth. He is revealed only to those who keep their mind one-pointed on the Lord of Love and thus develop a superconscious manner of knowing. Meditation enables them to go deeper and deeper into consciousness, from the world of words to the world of thoughts, then beyond thoughts to wisdom in the self. Get up, wake up, seek the guidance of an illumined teacher and realize the self. Sharp like a razor's edge, the sages say, is the path difficult to traverse. The Supreme Self is beyond name and form, beyond the senses, inexhaustible, without beginning, without end, beyond time, space, and causality, eternal, immutable. Those who realize the Self are forever free from the jaws of death. The wise who gain experiential knowledge of this timeless tale of Nachiketa, narrated by death, attain the glory of living and spiritual awareness. Those who, full of devotion, recite this supreme mystery at a spiritual gathering are fit for eternal life. They are indeed fit for eternal life. The self-existent Lord pierced the senses to turn outward. Thus we look to the world outside and see not the self within us. A sage withdrew his senses from the world of change and, seeking immortality, looked within and beheld the deathless self. The immature run after sense pleasures and fall into the widespread net of death. But the wise, knowing the self as deathless, seek not the changeless in the world of change. That through which one enjoys form, taste, smell, sound, touch, and sexual union is the self. Can there be anything not known to that who is the one in all? No one, no all. That through which one enjoys the waking and sleeping states is the self. To know that as consciousness is to go beyond sorrow. Those who know the self as enjoyer of the honey from the flowers of the senses, ever present within, ruler of time, go beyond fear, for this self is supreme. The God of creation, Brahma, born of the Godhead through meditation before the waters of life were created, who stands in the heart of every creature, is the self indeed, for this self is supreme. The Goddess of Energy, Aditi, born of the Godhead through vitality, mother of all the cosmic forces who stands in the heart of every creature is the self indeed for this self is supreme the god of fire agni hidden between two fire sticks like a child well protected in the mother's womb whom we adore every day in meditation is the self indeed for this self is supreme that which is the source of the sun and of every power in the cosmos, beyond which there is neither going nor coming, is the self indeed. For this self is supreme. What is here is also there. What is there, also here. Who sees multiplicity but not the one indivisible self, must wander on and on from death to death. Only the one-pointed mind attains this state of unity. There is no one but the self. Who sees multiplicity but not the one indivisible self must wander on and on from death to death. That thumb-sized being enshrined in the heart, ruler of time, past and future, to see whom is to go beyond all fear, is the self indeed, for this self is supreme. That thumb-sized being, a flame without smoke, ruler of time, past and future, the same on this day as on tomorrow, is the self indeed, for this self is supreme. 
As the rain on a mountain peak runs off the slopes on all sides, so those who see only the seeming multiplicity of life run after things on every side. As pure water poured into pure water becomes the very same, so does the self of the illumined man or woman, Nachiketa, verily become one with the Godhead. There is a city with eleven gates of which the ruler is the unborn self whose light forever shines. They go beyond sorrow who meditate on the self and are freed from the cycle of birth and death. For this self is supreme. The self is the sun shining in the sky, the wind blowing in space. He is the fire at the altar and in the home the guest. He dwells in human beings in gods, in truth, and in the vast firmament. He is the fish born in water, the plant growing in the earth, the river flowing down from the mountain, for this self is supreme. The adorable one who is seated in the heart rules the breath of life. Unto him all the senses pay their homage. When the dweller in the body breaks out in freedom from the bonds of flesh, what remains, for this self is supreme. We live not by the breath that flows in and flows out, but by him who causes the breath to flow in and flow out. Now, O oh Nachikita, I will tell you of this unseen eternal Brahman and what befalls the self after death. Of those unaware of the self, some are born as embodied creatures while others remain in a lower stage of evolution as determined by their own need for growth. That which is awake even in our sleep, giving form in dreams to the objects of sense craving, that indeed is pure light, Brahman the immortal, who contains all the cosmos and beyond whom none can go, for this self is supreme. As the same fire assumes different shapes when it consumes objects differing in shape, so does the one self take the shape of every creature in whom he is present. As the same air assumes different shapes when it enters objects differing in shape, so does the one self take the shape of every creature in whom he is present. As the sun, who is the eye of the world, cannot be tainted by the defects in our eyes or by the objects it looks on, so the one self, dwelling in all, cannot be tainted by the evils of the world, for this self transcends all. The ruler supreme, inner self of all, multiplies his oneness into many. Eternal joy is theirs who see the self in their own hearts. To none else does it come. Changeless amid the things that pass away, pure consciousness in all who are conscious, the one answers the prayers of many. Eternal peace is theirs who see the self in their own hearts. To none else does it come. Nachiketa, how can I know that blissful self, supreme, inexpressible, realized by the wise, is he the light or does he reflect light? Yama, there shines not the sun, neither moon, nor star, nor flash of lightning, nor fire lit on earth. The self is the light reflected by all. He shining, everything shines after him. The tree of eternity has its roots above and its branches on earth below. Its pure root is Brahman, the immortal, from whom all the worlds draw their life and whom none can transcend. For this self is supreme. The cosmos comes forth from Brahman and moves in him. With his power it reverberates like thunder crashing in the sky. Those who realize him pass beyond the sway of death. In fear of him, fire burns. In fear of him, the sun shines, the clouds rain, and the winds blow. In fear of him, death stalks about to kill. If one fails to realize Brahman in this life, before the physical sheath is shed, he must again put on a body in the world of embodied creatures. Brahman can be seen as in a mirror, in a pure heart, 
in the world of the ancestors as in a dream, in the Gandharva world as the reflections in trembling waters, and clear as light in the realm of Brahma. Knowing the senses to be separate from the self and the sense experience to be fleeting, the wise grieve no more. Above the senses is the mind. Above the mind is the intellect. Above that is the ego. And above the ego is the unmanifested cause. And beyond is Brahman, omnipresent, attributeless. Realizing him, one is released from the cycle of birth and death. He is formless and can never be seen with these two eyes. But he reveals himself in the heart made pure through meditation and sense restraint. Realizing him, one is released from the cycle of birth and death. When the five senses are stilled, when the mind is stilled, when the intellect is stilled, that is called the highest state by the wise. They say yoga is this complete stillness in which one enters the unitive state never to become separate again. If one is not established in this state, the sense of unity will come and go. The unitive state cannot be attained through words or thoughts or through the eye. How can it be attained except through one who is established in this state himself? There are two selves, the separate ego and the indivisible Atman. When one rises above I and me and mine, the Atman is revealed as one's real self. When all desires that surge in the heart are renounced, the mortal becomes immortal. When all the knots that strangle the heart are loosened, the mortal becomes immortal. This sums up the teaching of the scriptures. From the heart there radiate a hundred and one vital tracks. One of them rises to the crown of the head. This way leads to immortality, the others to death. The Lord of love, not larger than the thumb, is ever enshrined in the hearts of all. Draw him clear out of the physical sheath as one draws the stalk from the munja grass. Know thyself to be pure and immortal. Know thyself to be pure and immortal. Nachiketa learned from the king of death the whole discipline of meditation. Freeing himself from all separateness, he won immortality in Brahman. So blessed is everyone who knows the Self. Om Shanti 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 The Mundaka Upanishad From infinite Godhead came forth Brahma, first among gods, from whom sprang the cosmos. Brahma gave the vision of the Godhead, the true source of wisdom that life demands, to his eldest son, Atarva, who gave it to Angi. In turn, Angi gave it to Satyavaha. In this tradition, Satyavaha gave it to Angiras. A great householder named Shanaka once came to Angiras and reverently asked, What is that by knowing which all is known. He replied, The illumined sages say knowledge is twofold, higher and lower. The study of the Vedas, linguistics, rituals, astronomy, and all the arts can be called lower knowledge. The higher is that which leads to self-realization. The eye cannot see it, mind cannot grasp it. The deathless self has neither cast nor race, neither eyes nor ears nor hands nor feet. Sages say this self is infinite in the great and in the small, everlasting and changeless, the source of life. As the web issues out of the spider and is withdrawn, as plants sprout from the earth, as hair grows from the body, even so, the sages say, this universe springs from the deathless self the source of life. The deathless self meditated upon himself 
and projected the universe as evolutionary energy. From this energy developed life, mind, the elements, and the world of karma, which is enchained by cause and effect. The deathless self sees all, knows all. From him springs Brahma, who embodies the process of evolution into name and form by which the one appears to be many. The rituals and the sacrifices described in the Vedas deal with lower knowledge. The sages ignored these rituals and went in search of higher knowledge. Look at these rituals. When the fire is lit, pour butter into the fire in two spots, then place the offering between these two. These oblations will take the worshipper on the sun's rays to the world of Brahma, where he can have his fill of enjoyment. Such rituals are unsafe rafts for crossing the sea of samsara, of birth and death. Doomed to shipwreck are those who try to cross the sea of samsara on these poor rafts. Ignorant of their ignorance, yet wise in their own esteem, these deluded men, proud of their vain learning, go round and round like the blind led by the blind. Living in darkness, immature, unaware of any higher good or goal, they fall again and again into the sea. But those who are pure in heart, who practice meditation and conquer their senses and passions, shall attain the immortal self, source of all light and source of all life. Action, prompted by pleasure or profit, cannot help anyone to cross the sea. Seek a teacher who has realized the self. To a student whose heart is full of love, who has conquered his senses and passions, the teacher will reveal the Lord of Love. Imperishable is the Lord of Love, as from a blazing fire thousands of sparks leap forth, so millions of beings arise from the Lord of Love and return to Him. The Lord of Love is above name and form. He is present in all and transcends all. Unborn, without body and without mind, from Him comes every body and mind. He is the source of space, air, fire, water, and the earth that holds us all. Fire is his head, the sun and moon his eyes, the heavens his ears, the scriptures his voice, the air his breath, the universe his heart, and the earth his footrest. The Lord of love is the innermost self of all. From him comes the fire that burns in the sun. From the sky lit by sun and moon comes rain. From rain comes food. From food the sexual seed. All finally come from the Lord of love. From him come the scriptures, chants and prayers, religious rites and sacrificial gifts. From him come work, time and givers of gifts and all things under the sun and moon. From him come the gods of the natural world, men, beasts, and birds, and food to nourish them. From him come all spiritual disciplines, meditation, truth, faith, and purity. From him come the seven organs of sense, seven hot desires and their sevenfold objects, and the seven levels of consciousness in the cavern of the heart. From him come all the seas and the mountains, the rivers and the plants that support life. As the innermost self of all, he dwells within the cavern of the heart. The Lord of love is the one self of all. He is detached work, spiritual wisdom, and immortality. Realize the self hidden in the heart and cut asunder the knot of ignorance here and now. Bright but hidden, the self dwells in the heart. Everything that moves, breathes, opens and closes lives in the self. He is the source of love and may be known through love but not through thought. He is the goal of life. Attain this goal. 
The shining self dwells hidden in the heart. Everything in the cosmos, great and small, lives in the self. He is the source of life, truth beyond the transience of this world. He is the goal of life. Attain this goal. Take the great bow of the sacred scriptures, place it on the arrow of devotion, then draw the bowstring of meditation and aim at the target, the Lord of love. The mantram is the bow, the aspirant is the arrow, and the Lord, the target. Now draw the bowstring of meditation and hitting the target, be one with him. In his robe are woven heaven and earth, mind and body, Realize him as the one behind the many and stop all vain talk. He is the bridge from death to deathless life where all the nerves meet like spokes in a wheel. There he dwells, the one behind the many. Meditate upon him in the mantra. May he guide us from death to deathless life. He knows everyone and sees everything. It is His glory that fills the cosmos. He resides in the city of the heart. It is His power that moves body and mind. May He guide us from death to deathless life. When He is seen within us and without, He sets right all doubts and dispels the pain of wrong actions committed in the past. In the golden city of the heart dwells the Lord of love without parts, without stain. Know him as the radiant light of lights. There shines not the sun, neither moon nor star, nor flash of lightning, nor fire lit on earth. The Lord is the light reflected by all. He shining, everything shines after him. The Lord of love is before and behind. He extends to the right and to the left. He extends above. He extends below. There is no one here but the Lord of love. He alone is. In truth, He alone is. Like two golden birds perched on the self-same tree, intimate friends, the ego and the self, dwell in the same body. The former eats the sweet and sour fruits of the tree of life, while the latter looks on in detachment. As long as we think we are the ego, we feel attached and fall into sorrow. But realize that you are the self, the Lord of life, and you will be freed from sorrow. When you realize that you are the self, supreme source of light, supreme source of love, you transcend the duality of life and enter into the unitive state. The Lord of love shines in the hearts of all, seeing him in all creatures. The wise forget themselves in the service of all. The Lord is their joy. The Lord is their rest, such as they are the lovers of the Lord. By truth, meditation, and self-control, one can enter into this state of joy and see the self shining in a pure heart. Truth is victorious, never untruth. Truth is the way. Truth is the goal of life, reached by sages who are free from self-will. The effulgent self who is beyond thought shines in the greatest, shines in the smallest, shines in the farthest, shines in the nearest, shines in the secret chamber of the heart. Beyond the reach of the senses is he, but not beyond the reach of a mind stilled through the practice of deep meditation. Beyond the reach of words and works is he, but not beyond the reach of a pure heart freed from the sway of the senses. Sages are granted all the help they need in everything they do to serve the Lord. Let all those who seek their own fulfillment love and honor the illumined sage. The wise have attained the unitive state and see only the resplendent Lord of love. Desiring nothing in the physical world, they have become one with the Lord of love. Those who dwell on and long for sense pleasure are born in a world of separateness. But let them realize they are the self, and all separateness will fall away. Not through discourse, not through the intellect, 
Not even through study of the scriptures can the self be realized. The self reveals himself to the one who longs for the self. And those who long for the self with all their heart are chosen by the self as his own. Not by the weak, not by the unearnest, not by those who practice wrong disciplines can the self be realized. The self reveals himself as the Lord of love to the one who practices right disciplines. What the sages sought, they have found at last. No more questions have they to ask of life. With self-will extinguished, they are at peace, seeing the Lord of love in all around, serving the Lord of love in all around. They are united with him forever. They have attained the summit of wisdom by the steep path of renunciation. They have attained to immortality and are united with the Lord of love. When they leave the body, the vital force returns to the cosmic womb, but their work becomes a beneficial force in life to bring others together in the self. The flowing river is lost in the sea. The illumined sage is lost in the self. The flowing river has become the sea. The illumined sage has become the self. Those who know the self become the self. None in their family forgets the self. Freed from the fetters of separateness, they attain to immortality. Let this wisdom be taught only to those who obey the law of life's unity. Let this wisdom be taught only to those who offer their lives to the Lord of love. This is the great truth taught in ancient times by the sage Angiras to Shaunaka. Let us adore the illumined sages. Let us adore the illumined sages. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Atareya Upanishad May my word be one with my thought, and my thought be one with my word. O Lord of love, let me realize you with my consciousness. May I realize the truth of the scriptures and translate it into my daily life. May I proclaim the truth of the scriptures. May I speak the truth. May it protect me, and may it protect my teacher. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Before the world was created, the self alone existed. Nothing whatever stirred. Then the self thought, let me create the world. He brought forth all the worlds out of himself. Ambas, high above the sky. Marichi, the sky. Mara, the middle regions, that is earth. And Appa, the realm of waters below. The self thought, I have created these worlds. Let me now create guardians for these worlds. From the waters he drew forth Purusha and gave him a form. As the self brooded over the form, a mouth opened, as does an egg, giving forth speech and fire. Nostrils opened with the power of breathing the air. Eyes opened, giving rise to sight and sun. And ears opened to hear the sound in space. Skin appeared, and from it hair. From hair came plants and trees. The heart gushed forth. From the heart came the mind, and from the mind came the moon. The navel opened with the downward force, apana, which gave rise to death. The sex organ rose with living water, which gave rise to birth. Thus came these guardians into the mighty ocean of existence. The self caused them to hunger and thirst. They said to the self, Give us a place where we can live and eat. He brought them the form of a cow. They said, That is not what we desire. He brought them the form of a horse. But they said again, This is not what we desire. He brought them a human form. They said, Enjoy just right. The human body is just right for us. The self asked them to enter the body and take up their places. Fire becoming speech, entered the mouth, air, becoming smell, entered the nose, the sun, becoming sight, entered the eyes, sounds in space, becoming hearing, entered the ears, 
Plants, herbs, and trees becoming hair entered the skin. The moon becoming mind entered the heart. The god of death becoming downward force entered the navel. The god of living water becoming sperm entered the sex organ. Hunger and thirst said to the self, Give us a place. He told them, Enter into these guardians and share their life with them. Thus hunger and thirst for food, drink, and pleasure attend us, whatever we do in life. The self, creator, thought, Here are the worlds and their guardians. Let me now bring forth food for them. He brooded over the waters, and food appeared in the form of matter. It tried to run away in fear, and man, the first embodied being, tried to catch it with his speech, but he could not catch it with words. Merely by repeating the name of food, one cannot satisfy hunger. He tried to catch it with his breath, but he could not. Just by smelling food, one cannot satisfy hunger. He tried to catch it with his eyes, but he could not. By looking at food, one cannot satisfy hunger. He tried to catch it with his ears, but he could not. By merely hearing about food, one cannot satisfy hunger. He tried to catch it with his skin, but he could not. By touching food, one cannot satisfy hunger. He tried to catch it with his mind, but he could not. By thinking about food, one cannot satisfy hunger. He tried to catch it with his genital organ, but he could not. By sexual union, one cannot satisfy hunger. He tried to catch it with apana, the downward prana of digestion, and at last he caught it. Thus it is apana that takes in food. Thus it is apana that lives on food. The self thought, How can this be without me? If speaking is done by speech, breathing by breath, seeing by eyes, hearing by ears, smelling by nose, and meditation by the mind, then who am I? Entering the body through the gateway at the crown of the head, he passed into the three states of consciousness in which the self resides. Filled with wonder we sing, I see the Lord. So his name is Idamdra, he who sees. The name Indra stands for Idamdra. The gods do like to sit behind a veil. Indeed, they like to sit behind a veil. And it becomes child and woman. This is the first birth. Child and mother are one. She protects the child and needs protection. The mother carries the child in her womb, and the father bestows his loving care before and after birth. The child is their Atman, their very self, and continues their line without break as the second birth. He discharges all their holy duties and sheds his body too when it grows old to be born again. This is the third birth. The sage Vamadeva declared of old, While dwelling in the womb I understood the birth of all the gods, a hundred forms strong as steel, held me prisoner, but I broke loose from them like a hawk from the cage and came out swiftly. While still in the womb, Vamadeva made this declaration. He emerged from his mother's womb, fully illumined, to live in abiding joy, and went beyond death. Indeed, he went beyond death. Who is this self on whom we meditate? Is it the self by which we see, hear, smell, and taste? through which we speak in words? Is self the mind by which we perceive, direct, understand, know, remember, think, will, desire, and love? These are but servants of the self, who is pure consciousness. This self is all in all. He is all the gods, the five elements, earth, air, fire, water, and space, all creatures, great or small, born of eggs, of wombs, of heat, of shoots, horses, cows, elephants, men and women, all beings that walk, all beings that fly, and all that neither walk nor fly. Pratya is pure consciousness guiding all. The world rests on Pratya, and Pratya is Brahman. Those who realize Brahman live in joy and go beyond death. Indeed, they go beyond death. Om Shanti. Shanti, Shanti. The Tatiriya Upanishad. May the Lord of day grant us peace. May the Lord of night grant us peace. 
May the Lord of sight grant us peace. May the Lord of might grant us peace. May the Lord of speech grant us peace. May the Lord of space grant us peace. I bow down to Brahman, source of all power. I will speak the truth and follow the law. Guard me and my teacher against all harm. Guard me and my teacher against all harm. Let us learn the art of recitation which calls for knowledge of letters, accent, measure, emphasis, sequence, and rhythm. May the light of wisdom illumine us. May we become united with the Lord. Let us contemplate five categories, this world and luminous worlds in the sky, education, progeny, and speech. What is this world? Earth below, sky above, air between, and space connecting them. What are the luminous worlds in the sky? Fire on one side and sun on the other, water in between, lightning connecting them. What is education? Teacher speaking to the disciple, seated by his side, wisdom between, discourse connecting them. What is progeny? Mother on one side, father on the other, the child between, the sexual organ, connecting them. What is speech? The lower jaw and the upper, words between, and the tongue connecting them. Those who contemplate these categories will have children, cattle, food, and wisdom. O Lord of love, revealed in the scriptures, who have assumed the forms of all creatures, grant me wisdom to choose the path that can lead me to immortality. May my body be strong, my tongue be sweet, may my ears hear always the sound of Om, the supreme symbol of the Lord of love, and may my love for him grow more and more. Lord, may I grow in spiritual wisdom, and may I have food and clothes and cattle. May students come to me from far and near, like a flowing river all the year. May I be enabled to guide them all to train their senses and still their minds. May this be my wealth. May this be my fame. O Lord of love, may I enter into you. May you reveal yourself to me, the pure one, masquerading as many. You are the refuge of all devotees. I am your devotee. Make me your own. Having taught the Vedas, the teacher says, Speak the truth, do your duty, neglect not the scriptures, give your best to your teacher, do not cut off the line of progeny, swerve not from the truth, swerve not from the good, protect your spiritual progress always, give your best in learning and teaching, never fail in respect to the sages, see the divine in your mother, father, teacher, and guest, never do what is wrong. Honor those who are worthy of honor. Give with faith. Give with love. Give with joy. If you are in doubt about right conduct, follow the example of the sages who know what is best for spiritual growth. This is the instruction of the Vedas. This is the secret. This is the message. They have attained the goal who realize Brahman as the supreme reality, the source of truth, wisdom, and boundless joy. They see the Lord in the cave of the heart and are granted all the blessings of life. From Brahman came space, from space, air, from air, fire, from fire, water, from water, earth, from earth, plants, from plants, food, and from food, the human body head, arms, legs, and heart. From food are made all bodies which become food again for others after their death. Food is the most important of all things for the body. Therefore, it is the best medicine for all the body's ailments. They who look upon food as the Lord's gift shall never lack life's physical comforts. From food are made all bodies. All bodies feed on food, and it feeds on all bodies. 
the physical sheath is made up of food. Within it is contained the vital sheath, which has the same form with prana as head, viana as right arm, apana as left, space as heart, and earth as foundation. Man and woman, beast and bird, live by breath. Breath is therefore called the true sign of life. It is the vital force in everyone that determines how long we are to live. Those who look upon breath as the Lord's gift shall live to complete the full span of life. The vital sheath is made of living breath. Within it is contained the mental sheath, which has the same form with yajur as head, rig as right arm, sama as left. The heart is the wisdom of the Upanishads, and the Atarva is the foundation. Realizing that from which all words turn back and thoughts can never reach, one knows the bliss of Brahman and fears no more. Within the mental sheath made up of waves of thought, there is contained the sheath of wisdom. It has the same form, with faith as the head, righteousness as right arm, and truth as left. Practice of meditation is its heart, and discrimination its foundation. Wisdom means a life of selfless service. Even the gods seek spiritual wisdom. Those who attain wisdom are freed from sin and find all their selfless desires granted. The wisdom sheath is made of detachment. Within it is contained the sheath of bliss, which has the same form with joy as the head. Contentment as right arm and delight as left. Bliss is the heart and Brahman the foundation. Those who deny the Lord deny themselves and those who affirm the Lord affirm themselves. The wise, not the unwise, realize the Lord. The Lord of love willed, let me be many. And in the depths of his meditation he created everything that exists. Meditating, he entered into everything. He who has no form assumed many forms. He who is infinite appeared finite. He who is everywhere assumed a place. He who is all wisdom caused ignorance. He who is real caused unreality. It is he who has become everything. It is he who gives reality to all. Before the universe was created, Brahman existed as unmanifest. Brahman brought the Lord out of himself. Therefore he is called the self-existent. The self is the source of abiding joy. Our hearts are filled with joy in seeing him enshrined in the depths of our consciousness. If he were not there, who would breathe? Who would live? He it is who fills every heart with joy. When one realizes the self in whom all life is one, changeless, nameless, formless, then one fears no more. Until we realize the unity of life, we live in fear. For the mere scholar who knows not the self, his separateness becomes fear itself. Through fear of Brahman, the wind blows, sun shines, fire burns, rain falls, and death snatches all away. What is the joy of realizing the self? Take a young man, healthy, strong, good and cultured, who has all the wealth that earth can offer. Let us take this as one measure of joy. One hundred times that joy is one measure of the Gandharva's joy, but no less joy has one illumined, free from self-will. One hundred times that joy is one measure of the joy of Petris, but no less joy has one illumined, free from self-will. One hundred times that joy is one measure of the joy of Devas, but no less joy has one illumined, free from self-will. One hundred times that joy is one measure of the Karma Deva's joy, but no less joy has one illumined, free from self-will. 
one hundred times that joy is one measure of the joy of Indra, but no less joy as one illumined, free from self-will. One hundred times that joy is one measure of Brihaspati's joy, but no less joy as one illumined, free from self-will. One hundred times that joy is one measure of the joy of Virat, but no less joy has one illumined, free from self-will. One hundred times that joy is one measure of Prajapati's joy, but no less joy has one illumined, free from self-will. The self in man and in the sun are one. Those who understand this see through the world and go beyond the various sheaths of being to realize the unity of life. Realizing that from which all words turn back and thoughts can never reach, they know the bliss of Brahman and fear no more. No more are they oppressed by the question, how did I fail to perform what is right, and how did I perform what is not right? Those who realize the joy of Brahman, having known what is right and what is wrong, are delivered forever from this duality. Brigu went to his father Varuna and asked respectfully, What is Brahman? Varuna replied, First, learn about food, breath, eye, ear, speech, and mind. Then seek to know that from which these are born, by which they live, for which they search, and to which they return. That is Brahman. Brigu meditated and found that food is Brahman. From food are born all creatures, by food they grow, and to food they return. Not fully satisfied with his knowledge, Brigu went to his father, Varuna, and appealed, Please teach me more of Brahma. Seek it through meditation, replied Varuna, for meditation is Brahma. Brigu meditated and found that life is Brahma. From life are born all creatures, by life they grow, and to life they return. Not fully satisfied with his knowledge, Brigu went to his father, Varuna, and appealed, Please teach me more of Brahman. Seek it through meditation, replied Varuna, for meditation is Brahman. Brigu meditated and found that mind is Brahman. From mind are born all creatures. By mind they grow, and to mind they return. Not fully satisfied with his knowledge, Brigu went to his father Varuna and appealed, Please teach me more of Brahman. Seek it through meditation, replied Varuna, for meditation is Brahman. Brigu meditated and found that wisdom is Brahman. From wisdom come all creatures. By wisdom they grow, to wisdom return. Not fully satisfied with his knowledge, Brigu went to his father Varuna and appealed, Please teach me more of Brahman. Seek it through meditation, replied Varuna, for meditation is Brahman. Brigu meditated and found that joy is Brahman. From joy are born all creatures. By joy they grow, and to joy they return. Brigu, Varuna's son, realized this self in the very depths of meditation. Those who realize the self within the heart stand firm, grow rich, gather a family around them, and receive the love of all. Respect food. The body is made of food. Food and body exist to serve the self. Those who realize the self within the heart stand firm, grow rich, gather a family around them, and receive the love of all. Waste not food, waste not water, waste not fire. Fire and water exist to serve the self. Those who realize the self within the heart stand firm, grow rich, gather a family around them, and receive the love of all. Increase food. The earth can yield much more. Earth and space exist to serve the self. Those who realize the self within the heart stand firm, grow rich, gather a family around them, and receive the love of all. Refuse not food to those who are hungry. 
When you feed the hungry, you serve the Lord from whom is born every living creature. Those who realize the self within the heart stand firm, grow rich, gather a family around them, and receive the love of all. Realizing this makes our words pleasing, our breathing deep, our arms ready to serve the Lord in all around, our feet ready to go to the help of everyone in need. Realizing this, we see the Lord of love in beast and bird, in starlight and in joy, in sex energy, and in the grateful rain, in everything the universe contains. Drawing on the Lord's resources within, security, wisdom, and love in action, we conquer every enemy within to be united with the Lord of love. The self in man and in the sun are one. Those who understand this see through the world and go beyond the various sheaths of being to realize the unity of life. Those who realize that all life is one are at home everywhere and see themselves in all beings. They sing in wonder, I am the food of life. I am. I am. I eat the food of life. I eat. I eat. I link food and water. I link. I link. I am the firstborn in the universe older than the gods. I am immortal, who shares food with the hungry, protects me, who shares not with them, is consumed by me. I am this world, and I consume this world. They who understand this, understand life. This is the Upanishad, the secret teaching. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.